Times Square, May 12th, 1998. This is Virgin co-founder and billionaire business magnate Sir Richard Branson riding atop a tank and smashing through a four ton wall of Coca-Cola cans. And this utterly bizarre scene was the eccentric entrepreneur's way of signifying the official US launch of his latest business endeavor, Virgin Cola. And with this piece of corporate propaganda, Branson was also making it explicitly clear that he was marking Virgin's entry into the ongoing cola wars between Coke and Pepsi as a new dynamic and energetic challenger. So what exactly made Branson decide to declare war on Coke and Pepsi and was this a war that he actually could win? Okay, so for some added context to see how we got here, let's rewind the clock back a few years. The Virgin Group was formed in the 1970s by Richard Branson and his business partner, Nick Pell. But by the early 1990s, Virgin had already become a household name and a massively successful global business conglomerate, thanks much in part to the leadership of Richard Branson, who had since become the shrewd, yet daring company frontman. According to Branson, he loved setting himself apparently unachievable challenges and then trying to rise above them. And it was this exact mindset that gave him a willingness to have Virgin enter a vast array of disparate and diverse markets in an almost reckless fashion. But this boldness had indeed led to immense financial returns for Virgin as a result. With Branson founding numerous prosperous businesses for Virgin. Businesses such as Virgin Records, Virgin Interactive Entertainment and Virgin Atlantic. Along with these massive fiscal returns, this kind of major risk taking also helped Virgin as a brand to establish an edgy yet cool marketing image that resonated with younger consumers worldwide. Regardless of all his success however, Branson was already looking for his next market to conquer when he was approached in 1994 by an upstart amateur cola entrepreneur who claimed that he had created a new cola that was superior to Coke and Pepsi. And at this entrepreneur's behest, Branson would take part in a blind taste test of the entrepreneur's new cola formula, subsequently finding that he in fact preferred it to Coke and Pepsi. Intrigued by this result, Branson then administered the same blind taste test to his own kids. We then did the same test at our kids' school and the same thing turned out. Overwhelmingly, the kids loved the one that wasn't Coke and wasn't Pepsi. <laughs> After observing these results, Branson then began formulating the idea of forming his own cola company. He loved the challenges that it presented, felt that the Virgin brand was as strong as ever, and loved the idea of taking on Coca-Cola. You know, Coke is the best known brand in the world, and um, you know, if, if we could topple Coke, we thought it would be a lot of fun. <laughs> but anyway. Additionally, there was also very little financial risk if the venture failed. With all of these variables in mind, the ever confident Branson finally decided to launch Virgin Cola in 1994. To help get the product off the ground, Branson signed a 50-50 partnership with beverage company Cot Corporation, who had the necessary manufacturing and logistical experience to help him get Virgin Cola onto the shelves at a slightly cheaper price than Coke. Now with the manufacturer secured, Virgin Cola was finally launched, though it was initially only available on Virgin planes and in Virgin cinemas. But to achieve the necessary product reach Branson needed for explosive growth, an exclusive distribution deal with Tesco was soon negotiated and signed thereafter. Virgin Cola would sell well at first, and according to Branson, when up against Pepsi, always outsold them. Eventually Virgin managed to capture 5% of the national UK soft drink market, but soon that share dropped to just 3% once the initial launch hype died down. Notwithstanding, Virgin Cola still became somewhat of a moderate success in the UK, though only ever achieving 30% distribution, which was a far cry from that of Coke or Pepsi. Virgin's signature edgy marketing style was soon on full display when in 1996 they debuted this, their new top heavy cola bottle design that Branson dubbed the Pammy. Named for Pamela Anderson, whom Branson had asked over dinner if he could use her name and figure for the new bottle design. Branson had previously met Anderson when he guest starred on an episode of Baywatch, which he also used to promote his new cola. Around this time, Virgin Cola also increased their marketing and TV advertising budget from 500,000 to a reported 5 million, just shy of Pepsi 6 million, in order to further compete for market share. Following this, Branson launched Virgin Cola in Europe, South Africa, Japan, and Australia, but he still had much bigger ambitions in mind for his new business. Branson set his sights on the biggest cola market in the world, America. 
It's going to be very, very tough for Virgin Cola to make a significant beachhead. They will not be a big brand, and will have great difficulty even getting shelf space in some of the major accounts. Breaking into the US market would be a mammoth undertaking for the company to attempt, but as usual, Branson was willing. The $54 billion US soda market was essentially a duopoly dominated by Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Coke and Pepsi had been engaged in the so-called Cola Wars since the 1970s, beginning with the Pepsi Challenge marketing campaign. This is the test. Pepsi versus Coke. The Pepsi Challenge. Pepsi. And all across America, more people pick Pepsi. Pepsi. Time Pepsi. after time after time. Pepsi Cola. At its heart, the Cola Wars were basically a giant marketing battle between Coke and Pepsi, trying to constantly one-up and outdo each other with bigger and bigger marketing stunts and consumer incentives. The war between the two companies actually only helped Pepsi and Coke become more successful, as no one paid much attention to other potential rival colas in the US market at the time, rivals such as RC Cola. One tactic employed during the war saw Coke and Pepsi offering huge discounts to retailers and paying massive slotting fees to carry their products. Buying up almost all of the supermarket shelf space, essentially carving up the market between them and boxing out any other potential competitors. This had resulted in a market that looked like this in the mid to late 1990s, with Coke at 44%, Pepsi at 31%, Dr. Pepper Snapple Group at 16%, and Cot at 4%. This saw Coke and Pepsi commanding a whopping 75% of the US soda market. Branson wanted to capture even just 1% of this extremely lucrative market, and after his tank stunt in Times Square, Branson quickly signed a distribution deal with US retailer Target, and also as part of its US marketing campaign, Virgin Cola would now be seen popping up in shows such as Friends, Buffy, and Ali McBeal. At first, this marketing push into the US mostly saw Virgin Cola become little more than an irritant to Coke and Pepsi, but soon, Branson's brashness would not only gain the attention of potential customers, but also the full attention of its competitors. While the heads of Coke didn't see Virgin Cola as much of a threat initially, there was however one executive from England working for Coke at the time who did see the potential threat from Virgin as a global brand. And this executive subsequently convinced her directors to give her permission to go back to the UK to compete with Virgin Cola directly. Once there, she began an aggressive business campaign to stamp Virgin Cola out by kneecapping their sales and distribution networks, offering retailers incredible terms to carry Coke over Virgin Cola, and would also allegedly threaten them with the removal of their Coke fridges. On top of this, Coca-Cola would then double their advertising and promotional budgets. Virgin Cola now found itself in a similar situation to that of US-based RC Cola during the Cola Wars. RC Cola barely survived during the Cola Wars due to Coke and Pepsi controlling most of the shelf space in supermarkets. This same Cola Wars tactic would now also badly hurt Virgin Cola and what growth they did have began to slow down considerably. While Coke fighting back did hurt Virgin badly, it wasn't the whole reason for Virgin Cola's slowdown however. The bigger issue went more to the root of the cola itself. Whilst Virgin Cola was a good product with great marketing, it just wasn't different enough from Coke or Pepsi to get people to switch over and sales always slumped as soon as the initial launch hype died down. By 1999, business was not going well in the UK or US at all. Sales of Virgin Cola in the UK were only at 28.6 million, while Cokes were over 620 million. And despite their best efforts, Virgin had barely managed to capture even 0.5% of the US cola market. Despite this dire outlook, Virgin would continue to push on, even launching a new caffeine-free version of their drink specifically for children, called Mini V. Can you handle it? However, this product would also soon fail, costing the company a reported $3 million in the process. Even after this major downturn, Branson only conceded defeat when he realized that Virgin Cola was the most popular cola in just one country. When I realized that we were the number one cola in Bangladesh and nowhere else, I think <laughs> we finally decided to call it a day. <laughs> Right. Virgin Cola soon reverted back to its roots, being mostly sold on trains and planes. Over time in the UK and US, Virgin Cola would be dropped from major retailers and in August 2009, Asda, the last major distributor carrying Virgin Cola, discontinued its sale. And in 2012, Silver Spring Mineral Water, the company producing Virgin Cola, then went into administration, and nobody has since picked up the license to manufacture Virgin Cola in the UK. Though it is still bizarrely available to purchase in Nigeria and the Philippines. 
The failure of Virgin Cola didn't hurt Branson or the Virgin Group much in the grand scheme of things, and both Branson and the company quickly rebounded, but there was, however, one last surprise in store. Um, so it wasn't until about a year later that um, a, a lady arrived who announced to me that she was the new manager of Virgin Group at Lloyds Bank, and she, we went out to dinner, and it turned out that she was the lady at Coke at the time who'd been in charge of the kneecapping exercise, and now she was my bank manager and I wasn't sure whether to strangle her or not. But. So that's the story of Virgin Cola, one of Richard Branson's biggest ever business mistakes. And despite Virgin Cola having many laudable and lofty goals, in the end, it all turned out to be nothing but a lot of fizz.